Brought to you in part by True Value Hardware, your store of first choice. Welcome. I'm E.G. Marshall. Welcome to the world of your own terrifying imagination. There are people who suddenly find themselves tortured and taunted by a fragile wisp of a memory. It's a memory of something they may have said or something they think they did. Exactly what it was has been long forgotten. But now it must be paid for. And the price? Life itself. Yes? Uh, are you Mrs. Louise Goodman? That's right. Are you sure? Why, of course I'm sure. It's just that uh, I don't want to make a mistake. I'm Mrs. Louise Goodman. Who are you? And... What is it you want? I want to keep my promise. Promise? What promise? I promised I'd kill you. Remember? Our mystery drama, A Little Night Murder was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Sam Dan and stars Tony Roberts. I'll be back shortly with Act One. Downtown at night, the city is a deserted place. The lofty office buildings, those gleaming towers of glass and steel, Stand quiet, empty and foreboding, like ancient temples. And like the ancient temples, they also have their priestesses. These are the ladies who enter at night with mops and brooms and vacuum cleaners to clear away the debris of the day's worship and purify the offices for tomorrow's rituals. We are concerned now with one of these, a sturdy middle-aged woman named... Mary Margaret Cannon. Steady, hard-working, no-nonsense. But on this Friday evening, something seems amiss. Mary Margaret is pale. She's nervous. And every now and then she stops working and just listens. Someone there? Terry, I'm scared. Scared? You? Oh, now, Mary, what did you be scared of? I, I don't know. It, 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 these murders. Murders? These women who've been getting killed. Now, I'll come and stay with you if you want. Oh, please. I, I'm so nervous, so jumpy. I'm so scared. Yeah, but why? I, I, I just don't know. I... Terry. Yes? I, I hear someone coming. Uh, are you sure? I hear someone. Terry. I'll hang up and call the police. Oh, no, no, don't. It's, it's just the guard. Oh. <laughs> yeah, you see? Now, is everything okay? Oh, yeah. Look, you just forget I called and get your rest. Oh, good evening, Tom. Oh, you're not Tom. No, I'm the new man, Mrs. Cannon. Oh, well, what happened to Tom? He called in earlier today. He said he was sick. They sent me down to relieve him. How'd you know my name? Oh, Tom told me. I asked him, uh, who's in the building tonight? And he said, uh, just Mrs. Cannon. But... But what? Well, Tom... Tom doesn't know my last name any more than I know his. We're just Mary and Tom. How, how did you know? Uh, why shouldn't I know your last name? You know mine. How... How would I know your last name? It's Jackson. Remember? Little P. 
Peter Jackson? I, I never saw you before in my life. Oh, you did, you did. Yes, you did. What, what, what do you want? I want to keep my promise. What promise? I promised I'd kill you. Oh, well, well, why do you want to kill me? You don't remember? Well, let me refresh your memory, Mary Margaret Cannon. Twenty-three years ago, you lived on Baxter Street, and one morning, you walked into a little grocery store. Oh! oh ah, now, I... now you remember. You have exactly 30 seconds to live. Oh, please. Please don't kill me, please. Please. Wouldn't you be saying your prayers? But I told the truth. If it was the truth, then God will forgive you. Pray, Mary Margaret Cannon. Pray. Oh, listen. Listen. My husband and I, we have a little money put aside. And I know exactly how you got it. Well, you can have it. All of it. Only don't pray. Pray. Pray, Mary Margaret. <laughs> Jackson. Peter Jackson. Maybe 30 years old. Tall, thin, blonde. Don't shout. No one can hear you. They'll hear me. They'll hear me. They'll arrest you and hang you. His name is Jackson. Jackson. Peter Jackson. Oh, no. No, no, don't. They'll catch you, Peter. They'll catch you. Number four. Mrs. Mary Margaret Cannon. Number five. Coming up. Miss Alice Maitland. Captain Blake. Yes, Commissioner. Commissioner, I understand you... Listen, if you think somebody else can run it better, then get somebody else. I... Oh, I agree, sir. I... Yes, sir. No need for any of us to blow his stack. <laughs> Absolutely, sir. Yes, I'll keep you informed. Well, you got a pretty good one here. Is this your first mad killer assignment, Lou? Yeah, I guess so, Captain. Mad killers, mad bombers, mad stranglers, you name it. You get one every 10, 15 years. You can count on it. You get a rash of absolutely senseless killings. No motive, no rhyme, no reason. Should we talk to her husband again? What for? All he's going to tell us is what a great lady she was and how they neither of them ever had any enemies. Captain Blake, suppose... Just suppose it isn't a mad killer. Four murders in 11 days. Number one, Mrs. Martha Denson shot while parking her car late at night. Number two, Mrs. Janet Drew shot in her backyard. Number three, Mrs. Louise Goodman shot in her apartment. Number four, this cleaning lady shot while at work. Well, could there be a connection? Do they have something in common? There's no pattern. None of them knew each other as far as we can make out or even had anything in common. Yeah, that we know of. It's the toughest situation in our business. A mad killer. Okay, he's a mad killer. Every killer is mad. But does this one have a method to his madness? Yeah. He uses a thirty-eight caliber revolver and shoots women. The last one, uh, Mrs. Cannon, that's the problem. What kind of problem? Well, he's a mad killer, you say, so he wanders around, and if he gets a chance, he'll kill. He sees a woman alone in a parking lot. 1230, WCOL. He, he sees Mrs. Drew in her backyard. He shoots her. He sees Mrs. Gooden alone in her apartment. He shoots her. Okay, how do you account for Mrs. Cannon? You're dealing with a madman, Lou. You can't account for anything he does. All right, three women are targets of opportunity. They happened along, or he happened along, and that was it. But he went out of his way to kill Mrs. Cannon. Look, he had to slug the night watchman. He had to take the elevator up 12 stories to find her. It means he wasn't just out to kill any woman. He wanted that woman. Why? That's good thinking, Lou. And if this were almost any other kind of case... Blake. What? Oh, no. Not another one. Okay, okay. All right, send her in. Did they tell you about nuts while you were getting your college degree? This one coming in sounds like a 14-carat nut to me. Captain Blake? Yes, I'm Captain Blake. This is Detective Parker. How do you do? Huh? I'm Miss Maitland, Alice Maitland. I own a bookshop on 3rd Street and... Well, it's about the murders. 
Do you know anything about the murders, Miss Maitland? I... I know who's going to be killed next. You do? Who? Me. Uh, why do you say that? I... I have a premonition. I see. I know what you gentlemen must be thinking. You're convinced I'm a hysterical woman or, or, or a crank. No, but uh, I... Miss Maitland, do you have any enemies? I don't know of any. Well, we know there's a homicidal maniac loose. It, it's true he may strike at anyone. That's not why I'm here. I know he's going to strike at me. Well, what reason would anyone have for killing you? What reason was there for killing those other women? Hey, you say your shop is on 3rd Street... I'll see that the officer on the beat keeps an eye on the place. Yes. I just thought I should tell you. That's all anyone can do, I suppose. Goodbye. Goodbye, Miss Maiden. Now, Lou, you have just conversed with an authentic member of the Nut Club. I don't know about that, Captain. She's a charter member. She belongs to the I'm the Next Victim chapter. I still say she's not a nut. Maybe not. Maybe she's just some poor little dame half scared out of her wits. Oh, she was calm. She was very calm. As a matter of fact, it's as if she knows what she's talking about. May I help you? Oh. Hello. Remember me? Yes. You're one of the detectives I spoke with. Yeah, Lou Parker. Tell me why you came to police headquarters with a story that... Well, rationally, it doesn't make sense. You said as much yourself. You felt that you had made yourself seem somewhat ridiculous. But now... Well, forget all that. I'm willing to assume that your story is true. That you really are next on the list. Then you do believe me? I'm willing to accept what you say. But you have to help me. Does anyone have a motive for wanting to kill you? No. You never did or said anything that may have hurt someone? I can't remember. A disappointed boyfriend? I never really disappointed anyone that way. And yet you insist someone wants to kill you. I know it sounds ridiculous. There's a reason for feeling the way you do. If only we could uncover that reason. Excuse me, that's my phone. Hello? 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 Miss Madeline? Yes. What is it? You you seem rather pale. Oh? What happened? When I picked up the phone, there was just a click on the other end. As if someone had just hung up. Well, why should that seem to upset you? Well, because it's happened before. It has? Yes. Frequently? I mean, often enough so that it really isn't just an accident? Three, four... Perhaps five times a day. Uh, when did it start? Oh, I'd say about two weeks ago. I remember it happened three times the night the first of those women was murdered. Well, why didn't you tell us this before? I, uh, I didn't think it was anything important. May I use your phone? It's back there in the office. Okay, how long will you be a moment? May I help you? Yes. Yeah. Is your name Alice Maitland? Yes. Can I do anything for you? Well, you see, I came here because I have to keep a certain promise I made. Say what you will about this young man. He has at least one redeeming feature. His word seems to be as good as his bond. But will he be able to keep this particular promise? This problem will be our primary concern when we return shortly with Act Two. At one time, a young man named Peter Jackson has made the same promise to several women. A promise that he would kill them. So far, he has kept his promise four times. Now, he is in a bookshop owned by a Miss Maitland, apparently ready to fulfill promise number five 
I came here because I have to keep a certain promise I made. You made a promise? Oh, yes. And I came here to keep my word. Miss Maitland, I think we're... Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't know you had a customer. <laughs> uh, what sort of promise are you talking about? Uh, oh, I, I, um, I had promised a special person I would buy her a book. And I came in here to, uh... Any particular type of book? Uh, yeah. Yes, uh, a good murder mystery. Oh, well, we have the latest Jonathan Merriweather novel. No, I, I, I don't dig him. Uh, nothing happens. Y you got anything by Mike Stilson? Now, there's a guy who really writes murders. I mean, he, he kills somebody every other page. Well, we're sold out on the latest. It's called Blood on the Street. Yeah, yeah, that's that's the one in which this guy kills all those dames. Uh, look, if you're interested in that kind of stuff, all you have to do is read the newspapers. Do I tell you what to read, buddy? <laughs> Sorry. I could order the book and have it day after tomorrow. Oh, no, that'll be too late. Well, try us again. Sure. Well, there's a guy with gruesome tastes. Well... Takes all kinds. Hey, you know, he's a great Mike Stilson fan, and he thinks nobody knows it. Who? My boss, Captain Blake. <laughs> You're kidding. Hey, this is the very first time I've ever seen you smile. Oh, I smile a lot. It's just recently. I uh, told Captain Blake about the calls. And? Well, you never know. He just grunted and said, I'll stay with it. Uh, but what time do you close? Just about now. I'll take you home. I live in this building. Two flights up. Well, how about some dinner? Oh, you don't have to. You asked for police protection. Is that the reason? Line of duty? Well, uh, yes and no. I'd like to. Except that, well, it's the end of the month and I'm swamped with paperwork. Well, this neighborhood seems safe enough. It's busy. And that diner across the street stays open all night. Look, keep this card handy at all times. It's got a special phone number. Now, use it. Anytime you're disturbed by anything at all, no matter how slight or trivial, don't feel embarrassed. Just get on the phone. Well, I've already told the officers everything. Yeah, I know, Mr. Cannon, but I just have one more question. It's very important. What could be important? There is dead. You said that Mrs. Cannon had no enemies. Uh, I'll take that back. She had a great many enemies. But when we asked you last night, you said she had none. Uh, sometimes when you think about a question, you, you see it in a whole new light. Can you name some of these enemies? She was good. She was honest. I'm, I'm, I'm sure she was. But j just tell me this. During the past ten days or so, would the phone ring and then go dead as soon as you picked it up? Yeah, now that you mention it... Yeah, it happened. Often? At least two, three, maybe four times a day. I see. Is the name Alice Maitland familiar? Alice Maitland. Think. Alice Maitland. You know, there is something familiar about it. The Alice Maitland. Think of the type of person with whom you could associate that name. Now, would she be a, um, a movie star, a librarian, a... a teacher, a, a woman who might own a bookstore? No, no, none of those. I think of a little girl. A little girl named Alice Maitland. Did she live in the neighborhood? Uh, you know, these past couple of years, my memory, it, uh, it just comes and goes. Right now, it's gone. Well, if ever you remember why and how you know Alice Maitland, call the number on this card. I'll have another cup of coffee, please. Are you waiting for somebody, mister? Well, not exactly. Why do you ask? Oh, well, now you've been sitting around for hours drinking this stuff. Is the coffee in this joint that good? <laughs> Look, don't be frightened. Oh, who's frightened? Well, you are, so, uh, just look at this. Look. Oh, you're a cop. Uh-huh. You know, I was beginning to think that you could be that, that mad killer. Well, it could be just about anybody. I, uh... I hope I didn't scare you too badly. Well, the truth is, I, I wasn't that much scared for myself. No? But 
You've just been staring at that building across the street. I, I got the idea you were watching for something. Are you? Well, maybe. Could I have uh, change for the telephone, please? Thank you. Now, where have I seen him before? What did you say? Uh, not, not, nothing. I'm uh, just talking to myself. You do that a lot, don't you? Uh, do what? Talk to yourself. Well, uh, that was a short call. She wasn't home. Oh, it's too bad. Uh, did you find the book? What book? Uh, the one by Mike Stilson. Oh. No. Well, keep looking. You know the best way to stop talking to yourself? No. Get married. The light went on in her room. What's that? He went to the booth. He only had time to dial. And the light went on in Alice's well, apartment. Who, who's Alice? It could be a coincidence. Wait a minute. Alice, it's Lou Parker. Did I wake you? No. I'm up. Did your phone ring just a minute ago? Did it ring? Well, I don't know. What do you mean you don't know? Well, I, I'd fallen asleep and, well, I must have been having a bad dream. I, I, I think I heard the phone, but it, it could have been in the dream. Anyhow, I, I did wake up suddenly and I, I turned on the light, but I didn't hear the phone ringing anymore. Could it have been the ringing of the phone that woke you? I don't know. Did I hear it ring or did I dream it was ringing? I... Why do you ask? Well, I'm, I'm just checking. Uh, anyhow, I'm, I'm glad you're okay. I'll, I'll see you tomorrow. Good night. Oh, that was a short phone call, too. Uh, yeah. How is she? The, who? Your girl. Now, how do you know I call my girl? I told you I read character. Do you also read the future? Like an open book. Well, I sure hope so. <laughs> Captain, we got ourselves the killer. Oh, how can you be sure of your guy? I saw him in the bookshop. Does that make him a suspect? Maybe he likes to read. Then again in the diner. He may have been hungry. He didn't eat. He just went into the phone booth. He didn't even make a call. He was in there just long enough to let the number ring. And then he was out. So? So the light went on in Alice's, yeah, Miss Maitland's apartment. You mean he called her and hung up? Well, well, what? She isn't sure. How can she not be sure? The phone rang or it didn't. It isn't that simple. You see, she was asleep and she can't be sure. If it was the ringing of the phone that woke her up or if the ringing of the phone was part of her dream. Good luck. Look, Captain Blake, there's something about this guy. He's young, about... 30-ish, thin, blonde, a very hard line to his mouth. Lo, I think you better report in for general duty. This case is getting to you. Well, Captain, uh, please. It's no reflection. It's even to your credit. It shows you care about people. Captain, let me have one more day. Uh, all right, Lou. 24 hours. I'm sorry I've caused you so much embarrassment, Lou. That's all right. Captain Blake is unhappy. He'll get over it. He thinks I'm crazy. Well, he thinks most people are crazy. Lou, you can't keep guarding me forever. He has to strike at you soon. That's the pattern. He's done four murders in 12 days. That's one every three days. This is the night of the 15th day. He's due. Unless... Unless what? Unless I've scared him off for a while. Uh, no, no, keep away from your window. Why? Well, if he's around, we'll be tipped off. But could I have scared him away? After all, how would you know I'm a cop? You never saw him before? Never. We have to assume he's our killer. And what is the only thing we know about him besides his general physical description? We know he wanted a book by Mike Stilson. Blood on the streets. But he could have made that up on the spur of the moment. Now, people rarely make things up on the spur of the moment. He knows what he's doing. He's out to frighten you. 
The phone calls are a part of it. That book. There's something in it that would cause you to be frightened. But what? I don't know. I've never read it. Well, he figures you did. After all, you own a bookstore. I have to sell books by Mike Stilson, but no one can force me to read them. Well, the clue is in that book. Mm, wait a minute. Captain Blake, it's Lou Parker. Uh, you know it's two in the morning? Yes, sir, but I'm calling in the line of duty. You live dangerously, Lou. What is it? Captain, you've read all the books by Mike Stilson. What? It, it, don't deny it, sir. It's a known fact to watch the department. You mean you woke me up at two in the morning just to ask... L line of duty, sir. If I read those books, it's only because I get a good laugh at how unrealistic they are. Captain, what's the story of blood on the streets? Lou, I hope your patrolman's uniform still fits. I'll be able to prove this is the line of duty. Get Alice, pick up in your extension. Well, in a nutshell, a bunch of spoiled, rotten, rich kids are kind of high. They're joyriding in this sports car, and they run down and kill this harmless old gent. The harmless old gent has a son. The son comes back from Vietnam. He swears he'll have revenge, so he shoots the joyriders one by one. That's it? That's it. And it better be line of duty. Well, Alice? No. I was never involved in anything like that. Does it remind you of something that might be similar? No, but it has to. Think. I hope you don't mind if I answer your phone. Hello? Detective? Yes. He's here. You know, Blondie. Sandwich and a glass of milk. Thanks. He can't see me, but I can see him. Oh, he's headed for the phone booth. Oh, good work. We better hang up. What is it, Lou? Well, right now, right here and now, we're going to find out. If that telephone should ring. Whatever his faults, and we have already witnessed a rather grievous one, at least young Peter Jackson is something of a sportsman. In his own way, he warns his intended victims. He even tries to give them clues. This time, has he given one too many? We'll be back shortly with Act Three. What would our civilization be without the telephone? Imagine your life without it. And the way the telephone works, it requires two people to complete a call. However, some of the most eloquent conversations can be carried on when there's no one at the other end, as you shall hear. Answer it, Alice. Answer it. Hello? He hung up. No, I got him. Where are you going? You stay here. Hi, Detective. Where is he? Blondie? Well, I told you he went into the phone booth. He didn't stay in there more than a couple of seconds, and then he ran out of here. Did you see which way he went? He didn't even pay his check. Which way did he go? Look, you've got nothing to worry about. You'll get him. What are you saying? He ran into a cab that's usually parked outside. All right, could you describe I the... don't have to describe. I know. Look, all I want is I the... know the cab driver. He's a school teacher with days and he moonlights. His name is Vic Wilson. Does he have a radio? They all have radios. How could he make a living? What's the company? Oh, what a great witness I make. Jefferson. You even got the number on the card in the phone booth. Blondie's in for it, huh? Jefferson Cabs. This is a police call. You have a driver, Vic Wilson. He's on a job right now. The minute he checks in, have him report back to the diner at 3rd Street to Detective Parker. <laughs> Detective Parker? Yeah. 
I don't, how do I know? It's my badge. Get in. Can't be too careful with that maniac running around loose. Where'd you take your last fare? 790 Crest. Oh, what is it? It's an apartment building. How big? Six family, I said. Attached? No, it's all by itself. There's an empty lot on either side. They're renovating the neighborhood. It's, it's about time. He it's... lives there, huh? Yeah, I've been taking him there for the last couple of days. He, he comes out of the diner, he gets into the camp, that's where he goes. That's good enough. Is he a bad boy? Well, you wouldn't give him a star for good conduct, teacher. Throw on those searchlights, Haggerty, and hand me that bullhorn. We know who you are, and we know you're in there. We'll give you exactly 60 seconds to come out. Walk out the front door with your hands in the air. Keep behind the car, Lou. A nut like this one might want to take some people with him. You've had your minute. Come out, or we'll come in. All right, let's get in there fast. Open up, police. All right, stand to the side of the door, Lou. Cover me. Who is it? It's me, Lou. Lou. Lou, what happened? Well... You didn't get him. No, we didn't get him. Maybe it was the wrong house. No, the cab driver insists that's where he's been taking him. Then what happened? Oh, he's smart. He has himself dropped off at a false certain address in case he's being tailed, and then... Then he sneaks out. Makes sense. Of course, Captain Blake doesn't believe a word of it. But, Lou... Oh, come on. Six families live in that house. Six ordinary law-abiding families, and we rouse them at five in the morning and search the place. How angry is Captain Blake? Well, if he ever gets over it, I may wind up working nights in charge of the property office. Otherwise, I'm pounding a beat down along the docks. It's my fault. No. How do I really know I'm in danger? Why isn't this the product of an overwrought imagination? And the phone calls? Coincidence. <laughs> and the guy in the bookshop? And we see him again in the phone booth just before your telephone rings? It could all be coincidence. I can't accept that. But Captain Blake does. As far as I'm concerned, you're in danger. And you're convinced of it too, aren't you? But I don't have to be right. We can't take any more chances. Now, I'm going to stay here with you for another hour. By well, then, the stores will be open and we'll buy you a small 25 caliber revolver. No. I'll arrange for a permit and I'll show you how to use it. But I can't stand the sight of a gun. Alice, if a man is determined to kill you, all the advantages are on his side. We have to reduce the odds. I couldn't own a gun. I couldn't use one even if it meant saving my life. Now, Alice, I don't want to say that sounds silly, you... but... I don't think I can ever forget. Forget what? Well, I was... I was standing right next to a man once who... who was killed by a gun. When? Oh, years ago. I, I was about six. Who was killed? A very nice man. He was our grocer. Mr. Jackson. It was the day after New Year's. And Mama sent me out to buy... To this day, I remember... A quart of milk, a half pound of butter, and a jar of strawberry jam. And then this man came in. He had a gun. It was a holdup. And suddenly, there was a loud explosion and a, a terrible flash of light. Oh, it was terrible. Mr. Jackson fell to the floor. He was dead. And the man ran away. Was he ever caught? Oh, yes. Just a few hours later. I had to go to the station house to identify him. Do you realize what you've just told me? This is it. You identified the man. He was sent to jail. Now, years later, he wants his revenge. But that's not what happened. No? Well, you see, I was so frightened. I, I wasn't sure. I really couldn't identify him. And he went free. So why would he want to kill me now? 
And that gets us nowhere either. The others couldn't identify him either. The others? Yes. There were other people, but no one was sure of him. Now, if you had identified him and sent him to prison, it makes sense to suppose he'd want revenge, but you didn't. Now, whoever and wherever he is today, he's happy. But the fact that you failed to identify him could have made someone else unhappy. What do you mean? Oh, the book, Blood on the Streets. It's about a man who killed people who did his father an injury. Did this gross to have a son? I think so. I think a little boy used to play in the store. Oh, but it's so long ago. I... Who could that be? I'll take it. Hello? Uh, Mr. Parker, this is Terry Cannon. Remember me? Y yes, Mr. Cannon. They said I could reach you at this number. Uh, anyhow, it came to me. What came to you? Well, I, I was trying to puzzle out why the name Alice Maitland was so familiar. Well, sir, uh, about 23 years ago, Mary Margaret was in a grocery store, and a man was killed in a holdup. I took her down to the station house to identify the gunman. And could she? Well, no, sir, she really couldn't be sure. Anyhow, another one of the witnesses was a little girl. Her name was Alice Maitland. And I remember her because she was the most terrified little thing I'd ever seen in my life. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Cannon. I've got you. Finally, I've got you all tied together. Who? You and those women who were killed all come together in a little grocery store some 23 years ago. Finally, now we know who we're looking for. I'd like to see the look on Captain Blake's face when I tell him this. You live to see that look, friend. Lou! I know you got a gun in the shoulder holster. Just lay the phone down. Slow. Easy. Now, raise the hand. Slow. Easy. That's fine. Just keep him there. I, uh, guess your name is Jackson. Peter Jackson, Jr. You figured it out. So I, I figured I'd have to come back and get both of you. Uh-uh-uh. Hands stay up. Well, it's too late, Peter. We know about you. Yeah, you know about me. But the other cops don't. See, I was in the house across the street when you staged the raid. I thought I'd die laughing. I, I learned never to get dropped off where I live. That way you don't get surprised. You won't get away with it. Oh, I'll get away with it. She's the last one. I'm sorry about you, but I'll walk out of here. And who knew it was me? But why her? She was just a kid. She lied. But I didn't know. I really didn't know. Yeah, that's what they all said. But they were lying. They were bought off. All of you were bought off. Come on, Peter. Talk sense. My father is murdered. And the law lets a killer go free. And you want me to talk sense? Does it make sense that five people who were standing right there couldn't recognize him? But I couldn't be sure. I really couldn't be sure. My father, he never hurt a soul in his life. If a hungry person didn't have a penny in his pocket, he could still walk out of that store with a loaf of bread or a bottle of milk. If your father was that kind of man, what would he think of you, killing innocent people? My father believed in justice. But you knew who the killer was. Why didn't you go after him? Yeah, I did. I did, but I was cheated. I spent years on his trail, and when I finally caught up with him, he was in his grave. Well, my father wasn't going to be cheated out of everything. If I couldn't have the killer, at least I could get the people who helped him. Let me explain something. No, no, you don't want to explain anything. You want, you want, you want a stall. You want a chance to go for your gun. Well, you won't get it. See, I'll kill you first, and then her. There's such a thing in this world as justice. If the law won't give it to you, then you make your own. And that's why you're doing this? For justice? That's right. That's wrong. You're doing it because you love to kill. That's a lie. Ah, it's the truth. Look at yourself. Look at how you're enjoying this. I'm doing what has to be done. You killed those four women and you enjoyed it. You have 30 seconds to live. Say your prayers. How long do you think you have to live? You're going to keep killing and you'll be caught. You can't stop. I hate killing. Come on, you love to see people under the gun, how they squirm and sweat. You're eating this up. Look at your face in that mirror. Look at that grin. Like a wolf. See how flushed and excited you are. Look at yourself. Look. I'm going to break your arm, stop it. Very good work, Lou. Very good. 
One more second and we would have had to gun him down. This way we can take him home alive. Captain Blake. Somehow, I'm going to get back here. Get back to you, Miss Alice Maitland. I'll keep my promise. Haggerty, Gordon, cuff him. Hustle him back to headquarters. Look, Alice, don't worry about him. You all right, Miss Maitland? Yes, I think so. <laughs> you shouldn't be. It was a rough experience. Why did you come back, Captain? Well, I guess we both solved it, Lou. You broke it by pure and simple brain work. I waited for a miracle. Oh, did you get it? Yeah, I got it. I got it because of this little machine. Hmm? Mary Cannon was killed in an office. She managed somehow to throw the switch on a dictating machine. A secretary came into work this morning and she heard Peter Jackson and she didn't stop running till she got to my desk. Listen. You see, Lou? There's your whole story. Of course, that isn't our whole story. For instance, you might want to know what happened to Peter Jackson. He's in a hospital for the criminally insane. For his sterling leadership in cracking the case, Captain Blake will probably become the next chief of police. Detective Parker will probably become Detective Sergeant Parker. And Miss Alice Maitland will probably become Mrs. Lou Parker. So you see, sometimes we can give you a happy ending. I'll be back shortly. The story you have just heard was concerned with the most precious concept the human race has ever created, justice. And when you think of Peter Jackson, perhaps he proves the point made by a great poet. When a man takes justice in his own hands, he will soon shape her to his own ends. Our cast included Tony Roberts, Susan Grossman, Jack Grimes, Bryna Rayburn, and Robert Dryden. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams. <laughs>